Okay. Um, hello, I'm Hernan Gonoraski. I work with Dr. Dowling at Toronto in, at the Sid Kids uh, Hospital. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be here today uh, he, because of personal reasons, but he sends his greeting, and I personally, I thank you all of, uh, of you just to uh, invite me. So today I'm going to talk about the natural history um, and clinical aspect of the tubular myopathies and central nuclear myopathies. But first of all, I would like to ask the question, why to do a natural history study? Um, basically, because it will give us uh, the characterization of a, a disease using standardized evaluation tools. So it will give us as well an objective a measure uh, of different parameters of the disease. This will give us pronost uh, pronostic values in order to, have, uh, to predict uh, the different evolution of an individual in, in the specific disease and it will give us as well the outcome measures. These outcome measures are really, really, really important in order to design clinical trials so we can actually, from the, through the clinical trials, find a possible uh, treatment. So I encourage you, all of you, to actually get in one of these natural history studies so we can get into potential treatment clinical trials. So how can we actually get this, uh, this data? We can, there's two basic ways. One is just looking to the past, just through reading the medical charts of the different patients, uh, and this will, call, we call it retrospective studies. The retrospective studies are quicker and easier to complete, but actually they are prone to different bias. The best way is to just look into the future, basically just follow up a patient through a specific certain uh, amount of time and try to get all the, the data that we can uh, get. So with this, we will get precise estimate of either, of the, either the incidence and the outcome of the relative risk of an outcome based on exposure. So I will tell you about two different uh, studies that one has, uh, has already done, um, was carried out by the University of Michigan with the sponsor of the Frey Foundation, um, um, Valerian. And uh, it was carried out by Dr. James Stalin. For those who doesn't know him, he's right there, by Kimberly, and um, other Kimberly, uh, Kramer, in the University of Michigan. And when this has been done through surveys, physical exam, pulmonary function testing, nerve conduction study, and other testing that we have looked into uh, through the charts. So, we have recruited, for the MTM uh, group, we have recruited 29 patients. The age of range was between 1 and 42 years old, uh, with a confirmatory gene test of, uh, in 23 of these patients. 73 of the patients were alive at the moment of the, of, of the, the clinical study. For the central nuclear myopathy, we recruited 15 patients, 10 of them were, were male, but I wanted to show you that only four of these patients have uh, the confirmatory gene, st uh, gene test. And I think um, we have to try and get genetic testing because this, as you already know, the central nuclear myopathy is a huge, uh, it's, a, it's a group that involves a lot of different genes. So to actually know how the, the disease is characterized, we need to know which gene is the affected one. And so you can see in this group, 100% uh, of the patients were alive in the, in the moment of the study. So all for the, from now on, I'm going to uh, talk about especially more in, I give you the, I'm going to give you the data more of the MTM uh, group. The MTM group, uh, all the, uh, the age of onset was on 100% was congenital in, in all the patients. And the mean time of diagnosis was at the 10.1 month. All the patients have a gross motor development delay, but if we look closer into each of the milestones, uh, the, highest mi uh, the highest motor milestone that they achieve, 28% of the patient uh, could roll over completely. 52% of them could sit by, the by themselves, stand and walk 10%, and crawl in at the, uh, at the age of 24 months, 10% of the patients. So in total, we can see that 52 of, of the patients could actually sit by themselves but there was a loss of motor uh, skills in 40 to 44 percent of the patients, and this is really important because some it could be because of the progression of the disease, or in this case, as we, ca as we have seen, thank you, <laughs> as we have seen, uh, it's more related to uh, secondary um, uh, complications. So 
what other parameters? One was the respiratory and feedings. As we can see here, the central nuclear, uh, the MTM group, had all of them at, uh, at birth had breathing uh, difficulties. The ventilatory use was in 24 of, the, uh, of them, and feeding difficulties in 28 from the 29 of the, of the patients. There is a huge difference also between when they need the, between the two groups, the MTM and the central nuclear myopathies, uh, in their necessity of respiratory, respiratory support. In the MTM, was 1.3 months against uh, the central nuclear myopathies 40, uh, at 44 uh, months. So if we look closer to the MTM uh, group, the ones that actually need ventil uh, ventilation use, uh, 75% are currently uh, needed, and 25% are not using it anymore. And this really correlates between high, how uh, the, the best uh, motor milestone that they achieve. If they, for example, uh, they could crawl, most probably, they will not need at some point uh, ventilatory use. That's what we have seen until now. The spine, to see the spine is really, really important because if you have spine deformities or spine uh, abnormalities in the spine uh, curvature like scoliosis, this will uh, produce a, a, a chest uh, abnormalities and thorax the malformations. Um, so it will decrease the, the air volume capacity. So if we see that 60, from our group of patients, 66 of the patients have an abnormal spine curvature, and from this group, 68% of, uh, percent, uh, worsen, especially at the age of 9.2 nine, uh, years, and 53 of them have a rapid change, and 32% of them require spine surgery. Other symptoms usually involve uh, another organs, is liver, heart, kidney, they also have bleeding disorders and uh, anesthesia-related disorders. From the liver ones, uh, they us we usually find an uh, increase of the, of the liver and increased uh, liver enzymes. The heart, although it says 29% in the MTM patients, only one of the patients uh, really uh, actually had a primary cardi cardiomyopathy. All the pa other patients uh, have a secondary complication of the heart because of secondary uh, of, uh, respiratory infections or other, sec or other, other complications. To look at the bleeding disorders and anesthesia is really important for in the MTM uh, group, especially if they are going to have a uh, surgery. What? Yes. So usually the the patients that actually have a problem during anesthesia, for example, spine surgery or any other kind of surgery, has been reported to have a. Uh, it wasn't malignant hyperthermia, uh, but it actually we have a high a, a rise in the temperature a, or other, other complications. Um, so in summary, the prevention of secondary complications are essential to prevent loss of motor skills. In, in the MTM uh, group, we usually perform annual pulmonary assessment, polysomnography, spinal examination, especially in, in, in the late childhood or adolescence, annual blood counts, annual liver function and test abdominal ultrasound, of course, and have all the prevention uh, measurements uh, prevention of, uh, before any surgery. The second study, and this is going to be really brief, is the, the one is currently uh, going on now. It's the prospective longitudinal study of natural history and functional study of patients with MTM. This is sponsored by Valerian and the Institute of Myology and Geneton. There is a, this is a multicentric international study with different, cent, uh, different centers in the, um, involved in Europe, across the US, and in, this, in our center in Canada. The objectives in this is, as I already told you, is to characterize the disease in the course of MTM. The secondary is to get prognosis variables and outcome measures. The methodology, we are going to recruit 60 patients with a study duration of 36 months, the Roman duration of 24 months, and the inclusion criteria is any age with a, a, diagnosis, a genetic diagnosis of MTM1, and it could be a male or a symptomatic female. The study design is going to be, depending the, the uh, assessment, the frequency of assessment will depend on the age, from zero to two years old, one visit every three months, to, two, to six years old, one visit every six months, about six years old, uh, one visit every six months in the first year, and after that, it's one visit a year. So, as you already know, this is a picture of one of the first family meetings. Um, 
as you may already know, it's almost all the patients are actually in wheelchairs. So to evaluate the upper limb, uh, the upper limb strength and, and motricity is really important. So we are going to evaluate strength, motricity, and activity of the upper limb, and we are going to do this by uh, all the all the study, uh, all elements that are already validated by Institute of Myology in France. The strength through the Mayo grip and the Mayo pinch. The motricity is by molded plate, and the activity is uh, through, through a bracelet called Actomayo. This all are validated. They, they have high precision. They, they can be used in ambulant and non-ambulant patients, and they already tested in other neuromuscular disorders like Duchenne. So also we are going to view the, the motor function in the, on those patients that are amb ambulance, see, with the six-minute walk test, the time to rise uh, from the floor, and other scales. The pulmonary function test uh, is really important as well. We need to evaluate the respiratory muscles and their volume capacity. I'm not going to go really deep into this because the people from Florida is going to tell, tell you more about this. But actually, we are going to measure all this with spirometry, peak cough flag, maximum respiratory and respiratory pressures. So in summary, we already have recruited four of the five patients for our center in Toronto. Uh, they all have completed the first visit, and I want to tell you. So to have a really nice outcome measure, it means that uh, it's, it's the route to the success of a, of, of a clinical trial. I would like to thank to all the lab and uh, all the other collaborators, but especially all the families that have participated in the study. And thank you very much.